Hello, everyone. I would like to welcome you in my presentation about virtual reality, specifically for rehabilitation. And um, my name is Aman Aman, first name Aman, last name Aman, it's correct. Um, I'm doing master's in biomedical engineering at ETH. And, um, and yeah, I would like to start with. So we are living in a world with a big challenge of aging population globally and specifically in Switzerland. The OECD economic survey of Switzerland predicts that the population will reach 10 million by 2060 of which one in three is retired. That's, um, that's a shocking statistic but it's expected like one in th one in three a third of the population will be will be effectively um, un unemployed so consequently due to longevity and higher survival rates the incidence of age related diseases such as stroke are also on the rise this results in higher demand and costs for rehabilitation specifically on the healthcare sector. Um, in 2017, the Federal Statistics Office stated that um, only inpatient hospital rehabilitation costs reached um, almost 2 billion francs. And so this is only the acute and um, semi-acute cases. And it doesn't, it doesn't uh, incorporate the long-term Post, post injury rehabilitation. So, what can what can meet this high demand and solve um, the increasing costs? So, there are novel technologies that have the potential of meeting the demands for rehabilitation. One major player is virtual reality. Um, there are competing efforts um, around the world to release the first virtual reality rehabilitation application in the market since the, the initial costs and the initial um, requirements are rather easy. Uh, uh, like a, you can develop it on a computer, you can develop it on a simulator and, and that's, that's a lot simpler than developing a medical technology, medical, yeah, like other medical technologies. So there are one company in the UK called Rescape, and they may see their first launch near this year, or probably next year due to COVID. And they believe that they can reduce the costs of inpatient rehabilitation costs with their technology um, in, in the UK. Which, which reaches about 2,000 pounds per day for inpatient rehabilitation. Another, um, another application in the US called XR Health, um, they launched this year and their application works remotely, independently, and also shares the user information with the physician to monitor um, the status and the progress so yeah, this is one aspect that um, um, that could be risky when when sharing your um, when sharing your sensitive medical information on the cloud that needs to be um, well addressed. Okay, so nevertheless, there are many clinical um, evidences in the literature that shows that. The, the great advantages of, um, of VR rehabilitation across different, uh, different types like PTSD, post-stroke, post-traumatic brain injury and others. And comparing, to, comparing it to the conventional way, there are many, um, there are many benefits. So this paper um, does a study uh, in the Journal of the Physiotherapy. It's, um, it showed evidence that utilizing virtual reality for post-stroke specifically um, showed great um, advantage 
and fast recovery in walking and mobility. And they recorded in, as, as well as improved mobility, improved motivation and engagement from the, from the patients. Um, this by itself can be a major factor because if, 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 the, if the patient is, is self-driven, then it's, um, you don't need to impose any you know, commitment, um, commitment devices, commitment methods to just to, to, to trick the user to, 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 to exercise more. So this virtual reality is very, um, uh, is very um, intense experience that the patient forgets about their current status, their, their pain, their anxiety, and just totally involved in the experience, which can have both sides, could be absolutely um, amazing experience for fast recovery. However, on the other hand, you can see how, how smartphones now is, is causing a lot of um, side effects from overuse and addiction. But um, yeah, so it's, 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 it's important to keep in mind. Um, however, these, um, the studies at the moment, because the technology is new, they, are, um, they, they don't provide long-term results, long-term longitudinal studies that shows the long-term uh, long effects of using virtual reality for rehabilitation. Does it cause addiction? Does it cause relapse? Does it, so all these things will be a lot clearer once those studies are, are done. So it sounds interesting, sounds very promising. So how does this VR rehabilitation work? So in simple terms, Virtual reality is, um, is, you can visualize it as a, as a huge screen in front of your face that completely covers the, ma the majority or all of your field of view. And it tricks your brain into thinking that you're in a different world. And for this, you need a head mount display um, such as popular ones, such as Oculus Rift and Valve. These displays require connected computer um, to generate the virtual world. However, there are alternatives that, um, that they have um, embedded computers that does the whole virtual reality um, simulation internally. And those systems can ha have sensors that tracks the environment around you, tracks your eye position, your head pose, and also so, uh, some, of, some of it, they have hand tracking so that, so that they can just, um, so that they can read the gesture of the user. So additionally, along with the hardware, there has to be um, a software that provides this uh, simulation. And it's, it's like a game, just, yeah, it's like a game on a computer, but instead of a computer, it's on a head mount display. And in the game, um, the player does activities that, um, that could be just simple, simple movement to activate their upper limb, their impaired, impaired limbs, or could be um, more systematic, which follows, um, which follows uh, a framework, which follows a framework such as one of the popular frameworks in occupational therapy is, is the, the, the ADL, the activities of daily living, which um, lists uh, the main activities of, of a normal, functional being from waking up until sleeping, which includes bathing, dental hygiene, toileting, eating, and others. And there are also more advanced frameworks depending on the severity of, of the impairment. So this VR, um, this VR rehab, rehabilitation exercise could simulate, for example, holding a toothbrush and and brushing your teeth or holding a virtual knife, which is a lot safer to, to, to train on, and a virtual knife until the patient is ready to move on to a real object and so on. Okay, so in order to, to really um, dissect the whole, is it, uh, is it good, is it, um, the future, is it the future? I had to do the value sensitive design method and list all the, all the stakeholders conceptually and try to um, find um, 
the roles and responsibilities and the values that uh, that yeah that, that they that they have. So the major stakeholders, in my view, are the firstly the patients because they are the ones that are just directly using the the VR headsets, the VR rehabilitation. Um, then the physicians and the hospitals, research centers, insurance companies, VR companies, and, and of course, the, the, the government. So the government plays um, a big role of policy making and regulation, and they make sure that the healthcare sector is growing and also sustainable, and they they, the responsibility is to maintain human welfare as well as um, human wel uh, welfare and, um, and, and trust. So one benefit of virtual reality uh, for, the, for the government is, uh, is the reduction of the you know, compulsory basic insurance premium. Uh, also, it allows for much um, higher rate of growth for the healthcare sector. Uh, and on the other hand, one challenge is to, is, to, um, is to handle all the data policies and, and security challenges with all the, um, with all the medical virtual reality um, uh, information. So the second stakeholder are the insurance companies. It's, it's rather, um, it's rather convoluted because each stakeholder interacts with, with many others. And so the insurance company, they interact mainly with the government. They also interact with the patients and with the employer. And for private health insurance companies, they're rather um, profit driven. However, it shouldn't be like that, but that's, yeah, but that's the reality. Um, so their responsibility is to try to balance to their best the benefits of their shareholders against the benefits of the patient's um, well-being. And one risk, uh, one risk on their side is uh, for virtual rehabilitation is the uncertainty since there are no like, long-term studies and it's a new technology and um, they claim, they, they have big claims of cost reduction, all these things, but uh, it's still not, um, it's not, um, solid, solid facts. So thirdly, you have the, the tech company, the VR companies. They, they, their value are rather simple, is, to, is, the, is, the, is the profit and the right to the market and ownership. One major risk for them, especially if they are um, a small tech company or a startup, is the, length, the lengthy and um, complicated regulation for medical technology. Um, for, such as virtual reality uh, for rehabilitation and also the costs it, it costs a lot at the beginning and there is no certainty at the end that they're going to uh, win win over the market or, or provide a, a plausible um, service then we have the physicians their main values are to maintain trust and maintain trust and the right to work and of course make some profits and they benefit with lower, um, lower costs of service and also sustainable service um, in the case of our aging society. So there's a, there's a big um, burden on them. And one of the, one of the uh, major benefits of having a virtual reality is, is to um, reduce, reduce, the, um, reduce the demand so that, um, you know, some, some of the uh, rehabilitation treatments could be done um, and home-based and doesn't require a physician with, with, each, with each session. Um, and, then a, and, a, and a challenge for them is, uh, is of course, uh, the learning curve to, to accommodate all those um, emerging virtual reality systems and gadgets and um, and additionally, is, is there is some uncertainty regarding employment in the future. Is, is those um, virtual reality technology going to replace completely um, the, the, the role of a physiotherapist? And of course, then we have the research centers. Um, I added this because I believe yeah, 
um, all, all of those, um, like they're the virtual reality, will not, will not, um, will not see light if it wasn't for the for the evidence and the clinical evidence from the research centers that has been working on virtual reality for yeah 10 20 years of yeah, of researching and and one major benefit for them is for from this vr um, technology is that they can collect quantitative ma many quantitative patient data uh, a lot a lot easier however uh, the big challenge, of course, is they have to require consent. It's not by default. So, and then lastly, of course, is the patient, uh, the main, the main stakeholder, the the values that are most important for the patient. Is of course, his physical and mental well-being. This is what we're trying to optimize for, and of course, the the, um, the value of privacy with using virtual reality and using the internet and how share, sharing his medical information with the clinician or others. And consent and choice, the, the value of choice of different, um, different rehabilitation services. So if he wants to opt in, if he's into the virtual reality or he just, just, just can't, he, he doesn't want to have this virtual reality. He wants the, the conventional therapy with the, um, with an interaction with a human therapist. So yeah, this is the value. And then socializing, of course. So there are two benefits from using virtual reality is to implement those novel treatments that provide um, a lot of benefits, like clinical benefit that, that, um, that shows faster recovery and, and um, yeah, faster recovery. And of course, also lowering treatment costs because you can have those virtual reality headsets uh, home-based and you could rent them and you could be covered by the insurance. There are many ways of, of reducing the costs. Um, but there are two main um, challenges is of course the privacy risks of your private information could be leaked, could be shared with people you don't want. And of course, um, de-socializing. So, so Similarly, how we see um, how we see smartphones um, disconnecting people from like the more people use, the more idea of socializing and meeting is, is changing. So I can see how virtual reality will also amplify this effect. So now, after studying all those um, all the, uh, the stakeholders and their values and the benefits and, and the harms. So there are important considerations for every um, VR rehabilitation developer. They must make sure that the patient's information are local and could be secure encrypted and not shared without consent to, 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 um, to um, um, yeah, and also uh, the the voluntary research, the voluntary voluntary participation in research studies, that the, um, the the user should have the right of choice to either opt in or opt out. And lastly, of course, the government should have more strict governmental regulations for new VR applications. Um, not any application should be um, labeled as. Uh, rehabilitation app and could be uh, sold um, just for the for the uh, welfare of the of the patients. So, what are future future projection of this technology? I can see that um, this this technology will will um, will will be very prevalent um, prevalence and it will it will have a, um, more exercises and more more um, more frame more frameworks exercises for rehabilitation that are personalized based on the user's like interest hobbies um, yeah and also there will be more in insurance plans uh, that add supplementary premiums that includes um, virtual reality home-based rehabilitation or not and uh, there will be more acceptance in the future from elderly uh, for post-stroke rehabilitation, I'd see in maybe 20, 
20 years. Right now, um, the, the acceptance, I can see that it will be very challenging. I mean, if, if just giving them a, a smartphone is, um, isn't a um, super mm. easy experience, so I can imagine just handling virtual reality as well. So, and then lastly, um, there will be use, overusing of virtual reality content leading to negative side effects, potential negative side effects, such as addiction or seclusion. And lastly, uh, the prevalence of virtual reality rehab in third world countries due to lowering in costs. Thank you so much for your attention and we engage the discussion.